I'm going to record this because we're getting into the real core discussions of economics and, and sustainability and scalability. Yeah. Right. I mean, the... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the, the scope of what we're looking at here, I mean, the application is for the organization, and then, there, of course, there's the rest of the world. Um, development. I'm, yeah, Jonathan, I'm okay with what's going to happen in the rest of the world when the brick press is fully developed and there are good training materials and and instructions and people start having their own enterprises it's going to go out into the world right right but the problem that i thought was priority from the my very first conversation with jonathan was how to get some leverage on jonathan's not Jonathan, sorry, Marchant's time and talent. Um, it, so he's in the middle of everything, and so he's the constraint, right? And, and he much, he's amazing, right? And able to do much more than most ordinary mortals, but still, it's not going as fast as he wants it right. to because there's not enough of him. And so if you don't solve that problem, you're going to make progress, but you're going to be frustrated that it's it's much slower than you want. Right, right. right. Well, I mean, certain of, of marching in, in the terms of, one, mentorship or even direct students. And, you know, a big part of the, 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 the conflict has been, you know, funding to some degree. You know, how can we be consistent with, you know, open source economics and, being able to bootstrap the funding. And so the economic model is, is one kind of conflicting constraint in terms of how we're going to move forward. Uh, you have, a, you know, we can definitely make a model, you know, uh, you know, we click, can make a, a click on that link. I'm sorry. <laughs> click on that link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, right. No, but keep going. Sorry. Okay. No problem. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that if we want to see, I mean, Again, if we want to see this move faster, I think part of the assets is going to be Marchin being able to communicate the video. And I think there's a lot that Marchin needs to get credit for in, in terms of that because the, the virtual video logging is, you know, organizational learning and teaching and culturing. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I'm here is because, you know, I've watched hundreds, you know, you know double-digit videos of Marchin doing different things. So there's a lot of passive learning that has happened. Now we're moving into active learning where – there's a real curriculum that we can develop uh, that's very specific. Uh, I think we're trying to do a one-size-fits-all on certain things, and that's where we're getting polarized. Um, I mean, as an organization, and what needs to happen for Martian to be duplicated, specific, and what we're doing right now is, is pretty broad. Um, Look, the, the only conflict is between the ambition level and the progress <laughs> right? Uh, between ambition level and what? And the progress level. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So if, if what you wanted to do was to get the brick press out into the world, and that's all you were focused on, you, you know, you'll have a big impact over the next few years, right? And the quality will be fantastic, and people will start doing this, and, and mm -hmm. you'll be happy with the impact in the world. But you, you're not just ambitious for the, the brick press, right? You're ambitious for the 3D printer and the aquaponics project and the power cube and, you know, the other 47 yeah. machines. I mean, there's a, I have a mental model and maybe a faulty mental model, but I do believe there's a synergy that arises at a certain point and I'm willing to take the time to do it. But it might be, I mean, it's, you don't, I mean, the result doesn't come until it actually is there. So, I mean, is that a risk or a mid-course correction to, to take at this point, you know? I mean, we're, we always ask this, how to, you know, what's the best way? I mean, right now, I actually don't feel too bad. I mean, certainly, like, okay, you know, t back in 2011, just to recap, I mean, got on a world stage, you know, tons of people approaching the project, and which is still the case. I mean, tons of people approach the project, and we don't know how to handle them, right? The, good problem. Right, so we're trying to work out things to do it. Um, 
the question still remains what is the best approach to take i mean i feel reasonably well that you know slowly i mean we are still producing results like you know milestones okay what are the milestones you know last year we, we milestone the fact that we can re build real housing like in weekend workshops you know a few few things like the economic model for the workshop we um we modeled so there's there's stuff that's in like cumulatively it's becoming a i i believe personally it's just becoming a juggernaut like it's something extremely powerful that's building and i think there's going to be a, a critical point where you know the skill sets the people involved the the community things click together i do think we we are building foundation i don't think we're like you know like absolutely spinning our wheels because definite point progress is being made but absolutely too you know we're not like some exponential growth right now we're we're i think we're an exponential organization in the sense that it could take a long time to go flat before you explode right i think we are uh, i believe we are my mental model is that we're an exponential organization that there's a lot of uh ground setting that's happening until it's ready certain things are in place so, but I mean, this is up for debate. What's the best thing to do right now? Yeah, I'm intrigued by you saying lots of people want to get involved and we just don't have a way of managing that. That, to me, sounds like it's all about leadership and planning. Absolutely. And coordinating. And Absolutely. All that stuff. It's a simple and management, so then, a management yeah, question that we have not solved. And, yeah. We're in the right, we're in the right place then that we're trying to figure out how do you develop leaders and leader standard work and that you know the question is are gonna, people going to show up and step up you know with mm -hmm. this training that we're doing but yeah w let's just keep going down the path of trying it and yeah. seeing what happens yeah i mean for for full transparency just just to comment i mean there are things like the brick press or power cube you know Take those two things. I mean, a robust enterprise could come out of that and pending people being available to actually say, okay, I'm going to champion that. I'm going to go with it. There's a huge opportunity there. But what we're finding is that those people are not showing up to the table or if, you know, or we're just not succeeding in, in uh, creating a space. You know, the other way to say it is we're not creating a space for that to happen. And certainly my approach to this was, okay, well, the leader who wants to come forward they will and you know the designs get better so all the time it's getting easier and easier like the boundaries the the entry barriers to actual success are constantly going down so so it can click at any time but yeah that's just been the challenge that no one particularly has stepped up in a in a way or the people that have stepped up they might be missing skill sets or have no track record and or or they're just plain closed source, you know, they want to patent the shit or whatever. I mean, <laughs> um, just culturally not aligned or just they're sociopaths or this or that. I mean, there's there's various um, blocks in a, in a way of this. So, so there's definitely lots of challenges. And yeah, what's, I mean, where are we right now? And, you know, how do we go forward? Well, so, and I have uh, 13 more minutes. So yeah. I think what we said to recap, Mm -hmm. What you're going to do tomorrow is we're we're adding inserting one more necessary module about the development process. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's that's I'm happening tomorrow. Do, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna. So, um, uh, should I listen to that or should I leave one of the ten spaces for somebody else? Uh, you should be there, but then again, anyone can view the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe because you're in on it. I mean, you, what you should see is, I mean, it's worthwhile for you to see the questions and uh, kind of. I mean, you can definitely either. It's either. Can I'm, you tell how many people would like to get in or no? I mean, last time it was more than ten because we saw ten at all times. So, but okay. beyond that, I have no more data than that. I'm gonna send out okay. the same invite to, to the thirty-four people or so. I'm, I'll start out. Yeah, I mean, you should you should definitely join. Definitely join on it. Uh, if maybe like if you see that there's ten people, we're maxed out. Maybe drop off and let somebody else who may not have. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'll do, and then I'll watch the uh, watch the video later. Yeah. 
in the meantime, what I'm going to do is uh, rejigger this deck a little bit based yeah. on our conversation today. Now I have another week to do that. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm mm -hmm. back in Boston, and I'll make some time for it. So, yeah. So that's what I'll do, ready for next Wednesday's next module. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, very interesting problem. And I think people like Wikipedia also have that problem about there being a lot of people that are willing to work. For us, it's a little different because we have, I mean, because a lot of times it's actual, you know, like real physical work, it's, there's more challenges. But I mean, what are the best, you know, the best, the people who had the same problem, what were the existing solutions? I mean, that's a really good thing to study in depth. And when you have a lot of, or, you know, I mean, we know that Wikipedia has $30 million to manage their community. So is that the only way to go that you, you really, you know, beef up the funding and, and then manage it properly? Or, or can we see the real challenge is that we're trying to do a, a, a federated model, which means that we distribute the operation as much as possible, which uh, puts some, some constraints on the process. But, you know, what are the best practices for, for how that did happen? I mean, WordPress is a federated infrastructure, and that's a, that took over the world, you know? So, um, Andreas or Jonathan, do you have any time to do any research about how other organizations have filled the leadership gap? Right. And we know Wikipedia's got plenty of uh, contributors, but they must also need quality control and leadership and some of that kind of stuff. We, we did talk to Gail, and uh, she was very, very... I mean, I... There's a lot of things I'd like to say. I mean, we know we're kind of short on time, but uh, I think the biggest thing is that we're looking for the organization what's necessary. And I think that's, you know, people that are coming in, they need to be taught. There needs to be materials so that people can understand how we operate. Um, and it's almost like a recruiting process in place while we're moving forward. But, I mean, we already have our objectives for this year and what needs to happen in terms of leadership and roles. One of our constraints, too, is, like you said, the, the monetary aspects of people being able to commit their time and, and that sometimes requires a full-time effort, and we don't have that uh, that ratio down. And of course, if we're going to have solve wicked world problems, you're going to negate a wicked world budget to some degree in terms of right. ratio. Um, and you know, the Linux Foundation was an example of that. But uh, there's a lot of I think catch-up work we've had to do. So that's one of the reasons why we've been bogged down uh, in terms of uh, just certain infrastructure issues that we're dealing. with. Yeah. Okay. And organizations definitely do have a budget, and that's something is, uh, is is kind of set out in advance. So, well, we, you know, given we could, we could, yeah. didn't start out with a thirty million dollar budget either, though. So, right? I mean, there is a way to start small. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, get momentum, and that's just what we're trying to figure right. out for you guys. Right. right. Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is going to be about the relational approach. You have to have people being able to talk to each other. Being a virtual organization, that's big, our biggest challenge. Uh, I mean, I think it, a lot of it is dealing with people and getting to know who they are and, and building those relationships. And it's having a strong, strong core group of people that really trust and know each other, and that's something that's happening right now. Uh, we're, we're developing that, that group, and it's, so it's very, very, you know, it's maturing, and I think you know Tom and you know jumped in and fixed the wiki. I mean, Tom's a Linux guru, but we just found out that he could do that. Uh, but we have a core group of people, and as we begin to become more cohesive, I think we can actually work a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. And what you're making me think of is, I wonder if you should have consider having a leadership retreat. You know. <laughs> Some event that's not about yeah. building a greenhouse or whatever, but is really where you invite your core yeah. um, contributors yeah. um, ju a weekend just to uh, to wrestle with this problem. It's, it's mentorship, mentorship, you know. And I think that you know it comes into you know Martin was gracious enough to, to allow for me to collaborate with me, and in that we've been able to work together. And I think finding certain people that you can work well with. Uh, and, and stay in contact with, get to know them. So it's just uh, over, over virtually. Uh, I think that's going to be the key part. Uh, it's about picking up the phone. Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Uh, and once they get to that level, they can, they can 
collaborate on a very efficient level, that's where we ideally want to be. But without building trust, it's going to be difficult. Hey, um, so this is just something to mull over. Um, whenever the slow season is in the winter, um, but uh, to I mean, I think we're talking about people who've got the kind of skills that mean they probably have a full-time job. So could you have a Labor Day or Columbus Day retreat right. of people that you've already had experience with, they've been contributors yeah. there, smart, you'd like to cultivate them. Could we design a wonderful, visionary, inclusive, yeah. get to know each other, not charge them for it, right? Figure out right, how right. to it could be something they really want to be part of with the understanding that 90% of the people who come, the expectation is they're going to step up to, you know, uh, continue their involvement or. Yeah. I think an active discussion with those people is well worth it. And we have considered it. And Jonathan, I think we were talking about potentially January that happening of 2016. Um, so this year, you know, meet more people and continue developing, and then January, I mean, definitely in August, we will have a month of, you know, high power month of builds of next, not this year, but next year. But we did consider definitely January. So we'll continue looking at that, like, like basically in the okay. winter time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can talk about that some more. Okay, I have to, uh, yeah. I have to go. So I'll join tomorrow until 10 people are on and then I'll listen to the rest of it later. And in the meantime, I'll work on making the changes that we talked about, cleaning yeah. up the deck that we're going to use. In a yeah. Way. I think, I mean, I think we're, we're on the right track. I mean, getting the training materials in place, I think that's absolutely critical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll keep working on it. Okay. 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 Thanks, Laura. See you later. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. So, um, no, good, good thoughts. I mean, I think we're, you know, doing what we can. Well, I mean, the, I think the, the expectation right now is that, that we're not developing at the speed that we want to. Is that yeah. kind of the notion? Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, de well, I would say actually more on the part of the community, it appears. I mean, there's definitely been some feedback within the community saying that, what are you guys doing? Are you guys out to launch? And uh, <laughs> because they might not see the number of things that are going in the background. But that does mean, yeah, it's that fertile birthing period. I mean, I personally feel we're, I think we're really building a solid foundation, and I feel really good about it. Um, we've learned a lot. Wow. I mean, our scope, our vision is extremely ambitious, and it's going to take time. We can be that organization that takes a long time to be on a straight path before it explodes into the nonlinear region. I mean, that's the definition of an exponential organization. I think... Um, I mean, I think we are we are one, and it's and unless you very much. It's a quality versus quantity thing, right? I mean, I yeah. think that's really the, the, the whole matter right now is that that we could have a large quantity of students and interns. Oh yeah. But it's that's where I think the re reevaluation, retooling is okay. We went from a you know half a million dollar budget to, to under a hundred grand budget a year, and that's that's a significant decrease. But uh, that budget was there to support a lot of the interns and even the activity going on and that definitely can happen again mm -hmm. but what about the quality of and, and re the retention of people uh, and I think that's where we're taking the more purist and ethical yeah. approach to say hey we want to produce uh, high quality leaders and high performers yeah uh, that's right and we spent yeah. the money when we had it we built a lot of infrastructure I mean all the existing infrastructure like Hab Lab and the workshop and the new buildings that's that's been built and now we're we've got basic infrastructure in place and we keep going but at this time just making sure that the leaders that or the even not only the leaders but the whole community comes up with us yeah well i think the other part to that is the marketing aspect and i know that, that when you had a lot of we had a lot of inspirational source and i think that's what people are, are kind of missing mm -hmm. is the inspirational source and i think uh, because that gives the, the one it's the entertainment factor for people. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the Netflix world and the entertainment world is insatiable. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have breaking, if, you, if people had it way, they'd be breaking bad, you know, season 10 because they want more and more and more. I mean, it's an insatiable market. So I think a lot of the feedback from people is like, hey, you guys, 
And it's more or less they want to they see more. But in terms of when it comes down to making products, mm-hmm. uh, I think we're capable of making some more headway. Um, you know, because our capacity is actually growing and not just our, you know, our yeah. social capital is just growing. So, I mean, social capital is growing. I mean, if, you know, if we make a, you know, I, I did a, the quarterly report for 2015, first quarter. I'm going to publish another one in about a month to see where we are. But I think our uh, the strongest development has been getting closer contacts with leaders of different open source projects with different supporting tools. I think our social capital is in general steady or growing. Uh, definitely the there's, I mean, there's a few new machines we've never built uh, at this level. So Microtrack, Bulldozer, Gasifier, there's going to be three new prototypes altogether. Um, and then the exciting developments on agriculture and aquaponics. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, it would be nice if we can capture that, the existing, and I mean, the, the, basically to resummarize the, the existing problem statement, it's to capture the, the people that already are interested and can can help just setting up those infrastructures for taking them up to the next level. I mean, basically what we've seen is, you know, with the, all the different uh, people who've been involved, we've been going at a certain level and we found the limits of that. And now we're just simply saying, okay, well, what's the next notch of, of structure and organization that allows the higher, uh, a more fun, more, um, more effective process to happen at this time. And, and I have not been disappointed in any of the outcomes as far as the, the kind of promise. I mean, my ambition has actually steadily grown to what's possible, having the understanding that, that the scalable, parallelizable group processes are feasible and simply that the open source world has not developed much of that yet. I mean, for open software, yes, or quite a bit with Linux and all the open source software, but for open hardware, the, this, the possibility of, of accelerated development has nowhere been tapped by us or I don't think by anyone else, really. Um, so I think there's a lot long to go. Of course, people might say, oh, look at RepRap. RepRap's a great case model that we have seen amazing. Basically, the entire industry was built on, an, you know, the entire and growing intensely growing 3d printer industry has exploded because of open source including MakerBot, which went proprietary and others i mean the whole industry is pretty much so that's i mean that's a good model and, and of course there's a lot to learn and a lot missing in that project as far as a what it could really be but um there's hints that much more can be done yeah yeah, so the sixth from Andreas will be delivered. Yeah, absolutely. If you know, Andreas is asking if we still want to have some organizational leaders, I mean, yeah, I mean, any organizational leader who has, right now we're basically talking about organizational development and training of people for leadership. So, yeah, I mean, while we can talk a lot specifically about tools that OSE uses, what are the more general frameworks, just like what we talked about before? We should definitely have more clarity on that. And I, I mean, I think the bottom line is that, I, I guess the main question is when, because the answer is yes, absolutely. The question is when is it going to happen? I think right now, as far as leadership, getting people familiar with, um, I think it's more important to get very familiar with the specifics of OSE. And then as we refine, as we build our teams and develop tools, our need for organizational learning is going to increase. And then we can pull in more theoretical or frameworks concepts. Uh, certainly the low hanging fruit appears to be just, just the simple basics. Here's our wiki. Here's docs. Here's some CAD software. Here's our project, the people. And, you know, just getting that rolling and, and getting that very solid. Uh, because we are finding out that a lot of the blocks are by pe- people who are absolutely not familiar with the methods or that there's just so much of the different things going on that all the time you're just spending so much time re-educating people. So, so pretty much formalizing that, making it a totally understood 
accepted protocol or set of you know procedures within the community that we're not stuck on any person that comes in there you know they're just they don't know what to do that's the first level so that's why I, I think that's actually what we're addressing in the first six sessions this is the OSC 101 how things are done and now we can go on to uh, I mean any innovative stuff any anything beyond like the very basics of what an open source project is we can cover that later but for now there's just so many basics to cover um, that the OSC specific things are a good good thing right now yeah okay but I really gotta get going right now we can definitely carry on this discussion for longer but um, gotta get going so yeah let's let's save it for the next time tomorrow the the second webinar is going on. It's basically about the open source ecology development method. What is what is open product development look like for OSE? The the standard procedures that we've been applying and trying to formalize that, make that more concrete and known for people, so that whoever else comes is probably looking at these videos as the first step to get informed on what all goes on. Okay, so yeah, guys. So thanks a lot. We'll let's talk. Let's talk another time. Yeah. Thanks. Sounds good. Thanks. Excellent. So much. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.